Nama ne pada cipta di ingat pada tu santi, amen. So today uh, we will hear about Saint Isidore of Seville. Uh, so he was um, born in the year 560, uh, died in 636, and is called the last of the Western Fathers of the Church. Um, uh, there's the Latin Fathers and the Greek Fathers. So St. John Damascene uh, is the last of the Greek Fathers. Isidore of Seville, uh, last of the Western Fathers. And not too many details are known of his personal life. Uh, he was born to noble parents in southern Spain, and he had two older brothers, both were bishops, and a sister as well, and she was a prioress over uh, multiple convents. Um, so his parents died when he was still young, so uh, Isidore was raised by his older brother, Leander. Now, Leander was bishop of the town of Seville, um, and, and he would end up, when, when his older brother died, he would pass on the bishopric to uh, Isidore. Um, and at this time in, in Spain, we say about 600, you know, 560, Spain is not a unified country. Um, the, the territory, it had been um, a, you know, a Roman territory for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, but the Visigoths had recently come in. The fall of the Roman Empire in 476, uh, that, that was due to um, not so much barbarian invasion, but migration. Whole um, you know, uh, villages and towns and just you know, tons of people were migrating into the Roman territories, right, seeking to escape the invasions of the Huns themselves. Uh, but these barbarians, primarily the, the Visigoths, uh, didn't have an appreciation for Roman education, <coughs> learning, culture, uh, any of that. And so there was this, and then uh, combined with the, the collapse of the Roman Empire, who was preserving it? Uh, where was the education, the, the, the works, the, the ancient works of the Greeks and the Romans uh, was falling by the wayside? Uh, not to mention the, the two different, entirely different uh, cultures and ethnicities and so on. So, um, and, and furthermore, these Visigoths, they're Aryans. Uh, yes, they're, they're Christians, but they're heretical. Uh, so this, this is the kind of the backdrop um, into which Isidore of Seville finds himself. Uh, as a young man raised by his brother, uh, he received education at one of the last um, institutes of, of, of learning in the country, uh, there in Seville. He was taught the, the, the trivium, the quadrivium, uh, given that classical education, and, and again, it was the last place in Spain where you could still find that. Uh, and it found an excellent student in Isidore. He was absolutely brilliant, completely excelled at his studies, uh, mastered not just all of those disciplines, uh, but, but many others as well, uh, art and music and law and um, uh, history. Uh, he, was, he was like, what do they call it? Um, uh, the polymath is I think the term they use these days. Somebody who is, has a wide um, uh, variety of interests and a great depth of knowledge in each of them. And so this would have been, for the time, uh, Isidore of Seville. He loved learning, um, but he also loved God, and he loved silence. And it's, it's unknown if he, he spent time as a monk, but he lived a monastic lifestyle. Uh, love of prayer, love of quiet, um, and that, that love of, of study. Uh, so this is how, this is what God does in those times where there, uh, there are, um, I would say, Spain at this time, it was on a, a, the, the brink. It, it could have gone in two directions. Spain could have just been, um, you know, the Visigoths could have taken over completely, suppressed Roman culture and learning, and it would have been just lost. That was a possibility. Um, and Isidore saved it from that, and in, and in so doing, uh, he built a system, he built a, uh, a compiled a body of knowledge that would be taught in Europe for the next 900 years. So from 600 to 1500, Europe would study what St. Isidore of Seville would compile. Uh, so moving on, what, what would he do? So around the year 600, so uh, Isidore is 40 years old. He's been, he's been studying, he's been living as a monk in, in prayer and solitude. Uh, his older brother dies and hands on the bishopric to St. Isidore. And this is very, very, I would you say, apostolic, right? After St. Peter, he would hand it on to somebody else and so on. So Isidore takes over and he is determined, right? From his study, he's gonna preserve the wisdom and knowledge of the past. He's gonna uh, maintain uh, that fruitful synthesis of, of, of secular education and, and, and Catholic faith. And he did so brilliantly. 
Uh, but first he had to, um, uh, among the things, he, he, he was compiling knowledge. He knew the knowledge he wanted to pass on to people, but he had to protect the faith, the faith uh, first, of course. And so he organized and presides over multiple councils and synods over the next 40 years uh, to stem the tide of Arianism. And he's fighting against the Visigothic kings. And in fact, um, next week, March 13th, is the Feast of St. Ermengild, which um, uh, Hermengild was one of the son of the king who converted and became Catholic and in fact was martyred, I think it was Easter Sunday. His own father killed his son because he wouldn't be an Arian. So that's the kind of stuff that, that Isidore Seville is fighting against and was a contemporary. Um, that, that occurred, St. Hermengild was martyred in 586, I think. So, so the, the Visigoths, they're, they're, they're tough, they're barbaric, uh, they, they have this heretical version of the faith and St. Isidore, through organizing, uh, again, these synods, these councils, would be successful in preserving the Catholic faith uh, there in Spain, which would later give rise to, uh, you know, those great lights in the church, John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, and so on. So St. Isidore was, was the one who laid the foundation, preventing that heresy, allowing those future saints to, uh, to be possible. Um, furthermore, to ensure uh, uh, this purity of doctrine among clergy, which is so important, uh, Isidore institutes, it was this novel idea of a seminary. Let's have a place where all the young men who want to be priests, they can come and receive a standard education. Undoubtedly, like uh, St. Augustine mentions this, it happened to St. Isidore, is that their knowledge of secular matters, their knowledge of philosophy, their knowledge of grammar, their knowledge of logic, enables the faith to take root properly. Um, I've said this before, philosophy, good philosophy is so important to theology because theology is thinking about God and you wanna be able to do that well. But if you can't think well, you can't think well about anything, God or, or doctrine or anything else. That's why a proper logical, philosophical foundation of the mind is absolutely essential to the church. To think well about God, first you have to be able to think and think well. So this is what Isidore knew, um, but he also knew in a culture where things were collapsing, um, people just didn't, they didn't know. Information wasn't ready, uh, readily available. Information that had been available was, was getting lost. Um, just this ignorance was creeping in. Uh, so it was, he made these seminaries uh, not just centers of ecclesiastical learning, but just learning in general, kind of like the remedial education everybody needs to have. So these seminarians learned the trivium, the quadrivium. They learned about uh, the church, ecclesi ecclesiology. They learned about history. They learned about medicine. They learned about art. They learned about geography. I, he was almost like he was remediating the, the, the 12 years of primary education they didn't get. So th this is what he did for the seminaries. Now, as you can imagine, all of this knowledge, he's kind of like this uh, uh, casting a universal net and trying to uh, synthesize everything that was being lost from the Romans. Uh, the, these, these works from the past that were falling by the wayside, he's gathering them up and summarizing them and giving them to students. Uh, well, you know, work of this, of this nature, and especially the, the, the scope and the breadth he was doing it, this is what you call an encyclopedia. That's what an encyclopedia is. It's seeking to get the essences of all these different disciplines and put it together in one source. Uh, so St. Isidore, after having done this for decades, was encouraged uh, by others, especially, um, who was it, uh, Bishop uh, Braulio of Saragossa would encourage him, you need to compile this. You, ne you need to write something where this is all gonna be preserved and handed on. And so uh, uh, St. Isidore of Seville would eventually compile what is called the etymologiae, uh, which is, uh, let's see, what was that, etymologiae. It was an encyclopedia in 20 volumes consisting of 448 chapters. And um, this is the second encyclopedia that had ever been attempted in history. Uh, the first encyclopedia was, was written by uh, Pliny the Elder. Uh, uh, that was uh, in the first century AD. And Pliny the Elder had written um, that encyclopedia. It was called a, um, oh, I think it was a history of the Roman Empire or something, or the history by Pliny. And that was like 23 chapters. Um, a very, very, this, was, this was like what Isidore did was 10 times larger than that. And it covered every known topic of interest at the time. 
it was uh, just a massive undertaking. And uh, Isidore quoted from, what was it, um, 158 authors, uh, both pagan and, and Catholic, and it includes everything. And I'm going to read some of the things that he was compiling, some of the, the topics he was, he was, he was uh, preserving. Um, and scholars say if it wasn't for St. Isidore Seville, some works would have been lost forever. We, we never would have recorded them. We wouldn't have them today had he not put them down in his encyclopedia. Because what was happening in Spain, that collapse of the Roman Empire, was happening all over the place. Manuscripts were getting lost. Libraries are falling into disrepair. Uh, manuscripts are not being copied. You had to do it by hand. Who was going to do that? Who was going to pay for that? Who was going to pay somebody a year's wages to copy down all, all of these things? Nobody was doing that anymore, except Isidore Seville. So here's what he wrote about, uh, what he compiled. So the trivium, grammar, rhetoric, dialectic, uh, arithmetic, geometry, music, astronomy, medicine, law, chronology, ecclesiastical books and offices, God, angels and saints, hierarchies of heaven and earth, the Roman Catholic Church, Jews, heresies, pagan philosophers, languages, peoples, kingdoms, armies, cities, and titles, etymologies, mankind, portents and transformation, birds and beasts, the physical world, atoms, elements, natural phenomena, geography, earth, Asia, Europe, Libya, islands, mountains, and caves, public buildings, public works, roads, metals and stones, agriculture, terms of war, games, jurisprudence, ships, houses, and clothing, food, tools, and furnishings. The end. So th this, was, this was compiled by one man, Isidore Seville. I mean, it, that, 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 that's just, I mean, this is the 600s. Where, where's the internet, right? Where, your, your, your roads. The, 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 the logistical accomplishment is, is, really, is really staggering, what he was able to do and compile. And as I said, he was that, that link. The ancient Greek, the ancient Roman accomplishments were being lost, and he preserved them. And what he did, the, 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 the etymologie, that would be copied and recopied. And, and because of it, uh, it would inspire scholars of what they read in the, in the etymologie to seek out those ancient sources and find out more information about it. Um, he's been called, Isidore Seville was called the schoolmaster of the Middle Ages uh, for the learning he bestowed on all these, these, these generations. Um, so this is his, his primary, I'm just uh, absolutely, and. I mean, just the, the people that studied. So he, he, he uh, not only was able to give Spain uh, kind of this unified culture through, through this, he unified Spain by unifying the church, giving seminarians, giving those churchmen, the men who would form souls, he gave them an education. So when, in turn, the souls they formed, that education will be passed on to them. So uh, uh, just an incredible accomplishment for Spain, but also for all of Europe, all of Europe. Everybody would study the etymologie, whether they were German or French or English or uh, whatever it may be, Italian. Everybody studied it. Everybody benefited. And, and that is really, the, that's what the Catholic Church was supposed to do, is um, when everybody's studying the same body of knowledge and, and the same truths, that's what it is. You can all study the same thing. If it's not true, you're just perpetuating error. But if everybody studies the same truth, truth doesn't change. And especially if everybody's studying in the same language, like Latin, what if every philosopher, every, every uh, priest studied in the same language? We all were thinking in the same terms. It didn't matter if you were Japanese or Eskimo or South American or North American or German or whatever. If we all fought in the same terms, we all fought in Latin, we all learned in Latin, how powerful would the church be? And I'm telling you, that is it, it, the, 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 when seminaries began teaching in anything other than Latin, that was the beginning of the disaster. And then we just see the fragmented world we have today. So this is what Isidore did for Europe. For 900 years, that gave the Catholic Church a core, a core of, of, of understanding and knowledge that was, gonna, that was just going to propagate outwards, that unity. Uh, but it wasn't just this. It wasn't just his, his learning. Uh, it was... Uh, equaled by a love of God and neighbor. If you have just one but not the other, it's not going to work. Uh, so that's why he, he was 40 years old before he even started this. Before he was bishop, he'd studied and he lived like a monk. He knew if you don't have a prayer life, if you don't have silent, silence and solitude, uh, you're going to be overcome with vanity of knowledge. You're, you're, you're going to be dissipated. Uh, and so he says, um, indeed, just as much as we must love God in contemplation, so what must we love our neighbor with action? It is impossible to live with the presence of both, um, 
to live without the presence of both one and the other in life. So that, that, that idea of contemplation and activity, it's the two souls of the apostolate, the interior life, the exterior life. Uh, so you have to have that prayer, you have to have that love of God, and then you can give it to love of your neighbor. What form did love of neighbor take for St. Isidore of Seville? Form the mind, right? Teach the mind, feed the mind, give, uh, uh, what, uh, give to the bread to those who are hungry, and they wanted the bread of truth. Not just doctrine, but of just understanding of the world, which God intended us to have. So, um, so for 40 years he does this, and in the last months of his life, uh, he, he had uh, uh, St. Isidore. What, he knew his end was coming, and this is kind of the proof uh, of what was on the inside. He just began to give everything away, like all of his personal possessions, all, whatever wealth he may have had left. It's that crowds of poor people came to his door uh, in those last few months, and he would just, just give away, give away, give away. Uh, so he finally died on April 4th in the year 636, and uh, his friend Bishop Braulio of Saragossa uh, said that he was the man of God uh, raised up to save the Spanish people from the tidal wave of barbarism. And not just the Spanish people, but all of Europe. And the Eighth Council of Toledo, uh, 20 years after his death, uh, it was proclaimed, um, it was said of him, the extraordinary doctor, the latest ornament of the Catholic Church, the most learned man of the latter ages, always to be named with reverence, Isidore. And so, thus is God pleased to act in times when we need him uh, the most. Uh, God will raise up those saints, as, as, I, as I keep saying, and our job is not to worry about it, but just to pray about it, to pray for it, and to do the best we can. Um, uh, you know, who knows what, what, what one man can do? Yes, St. Isidore is just, you know, the, the towering figure, but how many people was he surrounded by? Uh, he was shown kindness by his older brother. Uh, or what about the other monks with whom he had a good example shown to him? What about his teachers who taught him? All those people who were just doing the little things that they had to do well, and that combines uh, to give the environment uh, for God to raise up an extraordinary person. So we don't know where we are in that mix, and that's why it's so important just to do what's right in front of us as well as we can right now. Uh, get along with the people with whom you live, forgive them, bear wrongs patiently, say your daily prayers, show kindness to strangers, love God and love the faith. That's all he wants us to do. If we can do that, we don't need to worry about anything else. Uh, and then God will preserve his, his, his church, uh, his culture, uh, the world. St. Isidore of Seville, pray for us. And God bless you all. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.